Welcome to Commissioner Show, Episode 6. I'm joined by RJ Walgate of Ohio Elite Wiffle Ball, 2022 UWIFs U17 MVP and world champion. So congratulations, RJ. Welcome to the show. And uh, just first question to you is how did you get into Wiffle Ball? Um, so I got into Wiffle Ball. I saw an MLW video like most people. I'd always done like played with my friends like the soft toss with like those really hard plastic ones with the holes on both sides that you get for like baseball training we always did like soft toss with those and always loved playing that but i never knew that there was like a competitive world to it so i, I watched started watching mlw the first time 2020 opening day I, i'll never forget watching that video and then like i always loved wolf ball and that just sparked it even more because now i could like throw pitches and stuff so i then I got my first box of wiffle balls, scuffing, learning how to basically play the game, the whole thing. And I probably practiced for like a straight two years, just throwing, never, never really knowing where it would take me, but I always loved pitching. And then eventually I find guys to make a league with. Then we send a team to Michigan and then York, Pennsylvania and the rest is history. Yeah. So with your experience with that team, how did that assembly go? Um, specifically in Michigan, and then how did that lead to York? Yeah, so in terms of, like, making the league, in the summer of 21, 2021, me and five of my other neighbors made a league at first in my friend's backyard, and that did not go well. And so in the fall of 2021, I was looking to make a new one, and these were some of my old baseball teammates. I don't play baseball anymore, but my old baseball teammates that I knew – had seen MLW before and would be, you know, more committed and more passionate about it. And by, by that point, I had watched MLW a lot. And so I had always like the end goal in the back of my mind, like maybe we can go to Michigan and who knows what, but never really assembled the league for the purpose of that. And then I think in like June, I said like, yo, there's this football tournament in Michigan. What do you guys think? And eventually after I'd say about, we talked about it for like few weeks, maybe a cent, like the assembling process for like a month, the four guys that I started the league with the three guys and myself. And then we go to, we go to Michigan. We didn't think that we were going to do any well. I mean, I will say I'm the most like glass half full type of guy on my team, right. but like, our, our second pitcher, Jake Weber, especially him, because he's used to when he thinks like traveling for sports, he thinks like he's a big AAU basketball player. So like you probably thought we all thought there was going to be like kids throwing gas. We we're going to be lucky to make it out of the first round. And first game went well. Day one went well. And we're we're feeling OK because we lost a game that we shouldn't have. But I, I always knew in the back of my mind personally, because at that point, like I said, I'd been working pretty much for two years to get to that point. I always believed in like the work that I personally had put in because I was our main pitcher. And so I. I had a, I had a feeling personally that we would do really well and we ended up doing good enough to get invited back. Yeah. So how did that invite process go? And like, when did you first find out about the U S tournament and uh, what was your reaction? Okay. So how it happened is we talked a lot in Michigan to the WR Wiffle guys. Love those guys. Shout out to them. We talked to them a lot. And so I ended up following them on Instagram and I remember the day they got invited because I, I remember when, when the announcement came out in May about like, I think it was like in May or something about the, how they're doing this tournament, and whatever. I was, once again, in the back of my mind, I was like, dude, that'd be so cool if we could go there. But at that point, Wiffle and the Mitten wasn't even a thought in my mind. And so I remember they posted on Instagram, they got the invite and I'm thinking to myself, like we had, we got, we just got top four in Wiffle and the Mitten third place there's no way that we're not getting an invite. And so for the next three days, I checked Instagram 10 times per day, looking for a DM. I wanted it so bad. And after three days, I basically gave up and I was really disappointed. And then I want to say it was like one or two weeks later for, it was only like four weeks before you we, we, we didn't have much time and I, I hadn't been practicing with football as much, but still a good amount then. Cause we were trying to still trying to get our league season finished. And me and number 10, his name's Cooper, the kid that hit the home run in the championship, me and him go to the same school. And we were on a youth, a spiritual retreat at our school 
on a Saturday night and I'm just laying, chilling in a hammock, checking my phone. And I'm like, why not check Instagram? I go on my DM and it's Kyle on my personal account. And I am freaking out. Like I, I jumped straight over. I went to tell him I'm losing my absolute mind. I'm calling, I'm calling my friends, like making sure they can come. Cause like, I, I thought, I thought we were screwed. I, I, I didn't think that we were going cause it took like two weeks after the WR invite for us to get our invite. So like, I was just so shocked. I was so excited, a little nervous because like I, I had, because we weren't invited up until that point, I had no interest to try knife balls and do something different. So now like we actually had to learn how to use bigger bats, different regulations and all that stuff. And so I was really excited, a little bit nervous, but yeah. And then I remember getting the invite. We assembled the pieces together and yeah, ended up going to York. That's awesome. I mean, you mentioned knifing balls. Um, yeah. So compare that if you ended up doing that to the style of play in your league and did you like it better or worse? Okay. So what I'll start with what introduced me to knifing balls was I am a huge, like Steffi Wiffle boy, 28, like my screwball and my drop both like I modeled after him. And so he's really the first place that I saw knifing. And as you learn about MLW and competitive wiffle ball, you learn about knifing and all that stuff too. Mm -hmm. And so when I, when I learned about that, um, when I learned about that, sorry, I going up to you, if so I was like, all right, well, we'll try, we'll try knifing them or me personally, at least I was going to try knifing them first. And when I practiced with them, it moved. I do to answer your question that what I like better for a backyard style, like league, we still like to use concrete scuff in our league, but I definitely like in the competitive aspect knifed because I think it, I think it moves more like just straight up. I think it moves more. And so I kind of had to learn how to find the zone and cause it, it was moving more, like I said, so kind of had to learn how to find the zone with that. And then my teammates with a lot of them went back and forth. Um, Cooper, he didn't pitch a lot, but he used concrete. Frankie used knife and my friend Jake, actually our second pitcher. It's so weird. I had this knife ball that I brought and I threw with that so much that the bottom of it actually got scuffed from hitting the concrete so much. So he's using like, half scuff half knife it, it was the weirdest thing ever but he's like yo i think i think i'll stick with this one because i like it and we're like all right but whatever works for you and yeah it's ended up so to answer your question on what i like better i do like knives better but for backyard type i definitely i like the concrete scuff because it's like something that everyone can do you know what i mean yeah i mean i completely agree that's kind of the direction we were gonna head in our league to the knife balls and it's just like it's too hard to hit it looks cool mm -hmm. but um mm -hmm. not really as for our team, like when we arrived there, we sort of, uh, we were planning on just using scuff balls to like, that was kind of like accuracy wise, like what we've been doing. Um, and then a funny story that actually the night of the fan fest, my brother just picked up a knife ball and on one of the fields just threw it. And like, it had the most break we've ever seen. And we just were like, we have to use this. So uh, the next day, the next morning, we practiced a little before and i mean the movement was crazy um, you switched within a day yeah that was Dude. not the best decision because like i think on the first day we didn't allow we didn't allow a hit but we ended up walking in a run which was the problem yeah so yeah. obviously the control was an issue but next year we're gonna try to <laughs> we gotta work on that earlier yeah that is crazy i i worked I, I was so stressed about finding the zone and pitches working for knife. So the fact that you guys did it overnight is mind blowing to me. Yeah. So moving into the tournament itself, what were your initial, I mean, reactions when you arrived on Friday and moving into Saturday, how did that go compared to your expectations? Mm -hmm. So that, um, so the year 2022 wiffle ball in general is when I really started to learn about like, the multiple types of wiffle ball, you know, not just MLW. And so that's when I really started to learn about it and like discover what it was, especially the few weeks leading up to you. If I did like my research and all that mm -hmm. and started to learn some of the competitive players names and stuff like that. So like, I was pretty, ex I was really excited to get there, like leading up to it. Like I'll never forget walking in for the first time. Like that was like a, a dream come true. Like I'm the biggest wiffle ball nerd. So like yeah. going there, it was like, so crazy like seeing people like i still get like it is it's just crazy to go back and think about that and 
So I was kind of like, yeah, I just, I just didn't know what to think. It was so cool. Like, and it, cause that's the stuff that you see in videos, but like, I would never have a reason to go to York, Pennsylvania to like see that, let alone on that weekend. So to finally get to do that, it was, it was just crazy. I'm just, I was so blessed to be able to be there. And I, on Friday, I really didn't, I, I really wasn't trying to think about the tournament too much. I was trying to have fun and like, just take it all in. All right. Saturday, walk me through how that went. And, uh, yeah. Okay. So Saturday leading up to it, I'm getting there. You know, I'm warming up like usual. We're taking BP, learning with one the men that we actually have to take BP if we want to hit a ball. That was a rough experience, but I'm, uh, so we're taking BP. We're going through the warm ups, all that stuff. I'm feeling good. And I don't know what it is with me, but I hate risers. Like, I feel like every time I throw them, they're getting jacked off of, but I get there and my arms feeling loose. I do. I do a lot of stretching and I feel like from, from what I can tell, I feel like I'm pumped in this riser. Like I'm loving the way it's moving. And so we go into the colonials game and I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm throwing the riser. I'm throwing it. And I get by, I, once again, I feel like I'm pounding the zone with this thing. I feel like I'm throwing gas. I cannot throw gas, but I feel like I'm throwing it. And so I'd say I got about two innings with throwing a riser fine and sure enough i stupid riser i thought i was throwing gas and this kid the farthest hit wiffle ball maybe i've ever seen which i've not seen a lot of wiffle balls hit he hits a freaking nuke off of it left center and i'm just crushed i'm so mad at myself because it's i'll probably never throw a riser again and so and I feel the same way about sliders. I feel like risers and sliders are the two easiest pitches to hit. And I had not thrown a slider all day. But at that point, we were not doing well. We we're not a hitting team. We only hit like day two of UFs. So that's pretty much it, including myself. I'm the last hitter on the team. But I'm, uh, so yeah. And I'm like, at that point, I'm like, all right, screw it. I'm throwing the slider. First time I throw the slider, Matt, Matt Scope from the Colonials. Right to right field, dude. Another another missile. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. You can see me. I think my mom was live streaming. Like I turn around and put my hands on my head. Like I'm I'm so mad. And so day game one, after game one, I was so disappointed. I remember texting my dad, like, I just got humbled. I suck because I was so mad. I thought I thought I was gonna come in there and do pretty well. And I never, I never, I'm going to be honest. I never expected to lose to that team. I, I, re- I really didn't, you know, I, I respected that they got there, you know, just like we did, but I never expected to lose to them. So that really hurt. And then game two, we faced the revs. Nothing really much to say there. I, I don't think we got a hit in that game. We got seven runs off of walks. Like we, we, we really in the off season, we're definitely going to work on our hitting because hitting's not our strong suit. We won off of walks. I still don't think we got a hit in that game. And then going into day two, once again, I'm more like the glut the more the glass half full off guys. So we really didn't know how we were going to do. We were just going to try our best. First, we're playing the colonials again. And yeah. So our mindset heading from day one, heading into day two was just like, you know, we'll see, we'll see what happens really. You know what I mean? Like we had nothing to lose at that point. Yeah. So walk me through that game, next game and the championship. Okay. So game one, First, the Colonials again. I'm not throwing a riser or a slider here. I know, I know that going in. And I'm warming up. And it was it was a weird atmosphere because, like, that whole 12 hours before the game was, like, so stressful. Didn't know how we were going to do. Winner plays MLW. That was, like, like that's all I wanted to play MLW. That, that's all I wanted. And yeah. so I'm feeling – I'm feeling okay. Usually I'm feeling good. Like, I always find a way – I feel like I always find a way – to make pitches work in wiffle ball games, but I was feeling just okay because it was super, you, you guys play, you guys played a game early. It was super cold, was slippery, annoy, annoying. I had no desire to play with those conditions. I had to wrap my sweatshirt around my waist to dry it off, to dry off the balls. Mm-hmm. So it was interesting. And I ended up doing pretty well. I was, I was really nervous, not mm-hmm. going to lie, but I ended up doing pretty well. I think I threw three innings scoreless. And then, but once again, we are not the best hitting team at that point, so we can't hit a ball. We're, we're starting to see it better, but we still can't hit very well. So it's 0-0, zero, zero, bottom, shoot. No, top of the six, because we're the four seed, they're the five. Wow. Top of the six, and um, uh, our pitcher, Jake Weber, he only throws one pitch. It's a really good pitch, but the I think it might have been the same kid. He got, he got into another riser, 
and just took it to the same. I remember running back to the fence and just slipping and falling. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. Not again. But that that's like the first time in wiffle ball after we got out of the inning down one Oh, going into our last at bat where I was like, we cannot lose. And by that point, we're just starting to see it. Like we're just starting to like see the pitches and stuff being good at hitting. And I, I actually hit pretty well that game, which for me is the big accomplishment. And so we're going, going to that last inning. I think I got, I, oh, I actually grounded out, but we got man on first and second. I want to say one out and our, our boy Frankie comes up to the plate and that, that their second pitcher only threw one pitch as well. He threw, did you know he threw, he threw clean. He threw unscuffed. Yeah. And it was, it, it was a pretty nasty pitch though. And so, yeah, Frank, Frankie just sat on one, really got into it, and it hit the back wall for a triple, which at that point we, we, we thought all runners didn't score. But someone was like, all runners score. And so it's the guys from first and second made it two to one on a walk-off. Mm-hmm. And I was – that is the most excited in sports I've ever been. Like, I, I don't think they have the clips, though. You'll probably see it on, like, the tour or whatever comes out. But I, I threw my glasses. I was so happy. I remember after the game, Blade hands me my glasses, and he's like, oh, Arjun, there's glasses. He, goes, he said something like, Sally went too hard or something like that. Yeah. And so after that, I'm like, we get to play MLW. And it's like, I, like I've said it so many times, like a broken record. But like I said, I, I'm more the glass half full type guy, and I didn't think we are going to win MLW. Right. So like the day, uh, that, 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 but uh, the that, day before, they had just – ran through everyone like the colonials i think they'd be it was i think i was watching that game and they were just like they had no hope and mlw just dallas was unhittable um and then i'm gonna walk through sort of the bracket just so everyone because i don't know if there's like a clear picture right now like so you played the colonials in the morning we that played was four five matchup yeah, yeah we played hwbl and thankfully, we didn't have to go through that. Like, I know that feeling, though. It's it's incredible. Like, you have no hope. And then a second later, to swing the bat. Um, like, the, it's amazing. Um, yeah, so we had a – I think we had a leadoff or a home run with our second guy. So it was a pretty, like, stress-free game. And then you guys faced the Colon- – or the MLW Rising Stars. We faced the Flamingos in the semis. You can tell them about your side. Um, we're facing MLW? Is that what you mean? So, yeah. Okay. Um, so we're going to the MLW game. Like I said, you know, glass half full, blah, blah, blah. I didn't think we we're going to win. So that's when, you know, it's, it's pretty, pretty, it's not looking great. Mm-hmm. And Dallas unhittable Trey was throwing gas, but I knew in the back of my mind, that it wasn't as clear as it was like at the beginning of Wiffle and the men, like we did, did good, but I was always giving myself a chance. Like the two year, the work that I had put in, up until this point, I was just giving myself like a chance. I was like, you never know. There might be a chance that you do good this game. And I ended up being able to throw three, three good enough innings to get us by. Funny thing was Dallas and Trey both threw a no hitter, but they went their limit. So they couldn't finish the game. So, and I, I throw a good three scoreless innings. Same thing with our pitcher, Jake Weber, great pitcher through three scoreless innings as well. And um, we're going in, they got a, in my opinion, it was a mistake to take Landon out of the game because Jackson even said it in an Instagram live. He wasn't expecting to pitch at UFs. And I like, because Landon should have been pitching. And cause Jackson wasn't even expecting to pitch. And he said he didn't like the ball because mm-hmm. he had no reason to practice pre UFs. But they had, they had no choice to put him in. And so going in, they're putting, putting him in. And I remember thinking that whole tournament, I'm thinking, sit on a riser. You're sit. That's the pitch I can hit. You're sitting on a riser. Just sit on a riser. And we had, I think I was, I was the second, I was the second up. They got Jake Weber out first and I'm the second up and I got one, one in the count and I'm still thinking sit on the riser. And I just got it right where I wanted, took it to left center. And that gave us them that really gave us the momentum. I think he threw another walk because it, what, what it looked like his problem was he could either throw strikes or he could throw fast, but he couldn't really do both. Mm-hmm. So they ended up taking him out for Blade. Did you watch Blade pitch at all? Because he was just kind of lobbing yeah. it. Yeah, yeah he. Rough. Yeah, he he just kind of lobbed it, and so we got another six runs off of that going in seven zero. But we have no pitchers either. Right. So we had to put in Frankie, and I wasn't sure about it at the time. But like, you have no other option. 
Frankie walks in three one the three runs. So it's not looking good. We turn to Cooper. Who had we practiced in the parking lot like a lot before that tournament? Cooper had been showing promise in the parking lot, so I thought there was a. Ch- I never thought that the game was like over, over. You know what I mean? Like I never, I never said like, oh, dude, we're still losing this. I always thought we we're gonna win, even though it did get scary at times. Not gonna lie. Um, and so Cooper comes in. Think he got? I think he got two outs. He walked in one, but he got two outs, and I think he got two strikeouts actually. And wow. so I mean. We, we, we were pretty nervous because we didn't know how he was going to do it, but he was able to get two strikeouts. We, we were so happy. That was like one of the national championship at that point. Like, like VWL in that moment, like I, I didn't even care about that game right now. I was just so happy that we beat them mm-hmm. to see, you know, they de- it, yeah, it was just crazy because everyone, you know, counted us out, which they should have, because I'm not, I'm not going to say like, how'd you count us out? No, they should have, because we hadn't done, we hadn't done much on day one. And then going into VWL, I just thought kind of in the back of my mind, which I say back of my mind, I know all the time, I apologize, but I was like, we got to win this game after what we just came off of. Like I kind of said to myself, there's no way we're losing this game. Even though I knew that there was a chance, I said that there was no way that there was a chance. So game, that game, championship game, zero, both pitchers go for zeros in the first three innings. Jake wet. Oh, shoot. No, they don't go for zeros. Jeremy went for zero. I gave up a run. I gave up. Shout out to Jake Weber, actually. He had two, like, top ten plays in that game. Yeah. So, that, that I should have given up. I should have given up, like, a lot more. But thanks to him, um, he, he was really the MVP of that game, dude. Like, if, if I don't have him out there, I'm screwed. And so, I get out of there, only giving up one run. Jeremy throws it scoreless, and we're going in to face Sean. With Sean, it whiff on the mitten. He was their ace. Like he, yeah. he went, he went every every game for them. He was starting, and so it wasn't looking too good. But once again, he only threw one pitch as well. He threw this like two seam, and so yeah, I'm trying. I'm I'm like, um. Once again, we're all we're all sitting on that one pitch because that's the one pitch we got. And I forget who got on base, but I think it was one out. Oh no, it was he got the walk bug in the um. Uh, oh he, wow. he fought. He fought back. He he walked three guys on like 12 straight, I think. And then battled back, got two more out or no. Yeah. Then he got me out. I forget something happened, but I'm, I'm up, I'm up with like one or two outs and bases loaded. And like like I've said so many times, there's that one pitch. That's, that's what, that's what we're sitting on right now. And so I I hit it. It it wasn't like, I wouldn't say it's a hard hit ball. I remember I hit it and I like leaned over Cause I didn't know if he was going to, if it was going to be fielded before it got past the line, it just gets past the line. So we're tied one, one, we're going into extras and Weber had just thrown a good fourth inning. So we're feeling, we're feeling good, but Sean, you know, he's a great pitcher too. So we, we didn't know how it was going to pan out at that point. We were really just playing. I kind of had a feeling it was going to go to seven again and fifth inning, no runs, sixth inning, Cooper Shoke, clut. Clutch man, clutch. My dad talks about that home run all the time. Every time he sees him, and I wasn't even looking. Like he, he's just sitting up there. We had he was previously. I think it was the second batter in our lineup after the Colonials game. We moved him down to four because he wasn't hitting very good. Mm-hmm. And he comes up and just hits a rocket. I, I, I wasn't even looking. I jumped up. I was so happy because of that. Like Weber was throwing so good. I, I had a strong feeling we're winning that game. Yeah, and I, I was just like. Let's freaking go, dude! I was I I was so happy, and then Weber ends up getting three outs. They weren't they weren't super comfortable. I think he walked a guy or two, mm-hmm. but but ends up getting three outs, doing his job, and we're national champions. And I like that. That was just such a full circle moment for me because like the amount like I just I had no competitive experience, and I just waited two basically just waiting two years of nothing I could do except pitch in my driveway and. For that to happen, like it's crazy that we even made it to York playing wiffle ball, and yeah. for that to happen, it was un- unreal. I remember watching that game; like we were going back and forth, and uh, between that and I think it was the semis of the main tournament. And really, like I, I remember when the Flamingos pitcher got the walk bug, and I'm mm-hmm. like, "This can't be real!" And then he gets out of the inning with the bases loaded, and then like sends it to another extra. It was just back and forth. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kyle was on the call. That was really cool. And yeah, that, uh, that was that was super cool. Kyle on the call. That was yeah. that was 
Yeah, but anyway, keep going. Yeah, and something about I don't know. You kept talking about you guys were struggling to hit um, mm-hmm. until that day. It was the same thing with. I mean, I guess just me on my team, but like we were, we could not hit Saturday, and then we go to Sunday, and something just clicked for all of us um, mm-hmm. for the most part. So I I don't know what it was, but that championship Sunday just like brought up the best in everyone. I feel like. Mm-hmm. Um, and as for the event itself, like, what do you think the future could hold? Uh, what do you think winning the championship, like, does that give you any, like, is that like an opportunity for you? Like, what did you take away from that? Um, in terms of like an opportunity, the one thing that's definitely been on my mind that excites me is that next year, I hope that they can fill 16 out of 16 teams, number one. Mm-hmm. But I know that now, like, the opportunity to be able to get everyone's best shot. Like that was MLW last year. Everyone's bringing their best against MLW. The opportunity to do that really excites me. Um, We've talked about an MAW tournament in Pittsburgh. We definitely talked about how we want to get better at hitting and also how we want all four guys. We want to be comfortable or at least kind of like the goal that we haven't really talked about, but that everyone's expressed is that like we want, to be comfortable with all four guys being out there on the mound. You know what I mean? Not necessarily like this guy goes in, like any guy can go in at any point in time. You know what I mean? Like you put the best out there against the best, but like we want all four guys to be comfortable out on the mound. So I think, I think that's something that we'll definitely work towards. Yeah, for sure. And I'm, I mean, like next year, I think everyone's coming back. I don't think anyone, maybe it was just, I don't know who the, whoever the oldest is on the MLW team had to leave, but I know Dallas is back. The whole Flamingos team's back. You guys will be back. Yeah, I know. Um, I know. I know Jackson's gone. That's that's all I know. I just, okay. Yeah, but it's going to be so competitive. And like you mentioned mm-hmm. earlier, some of the guys didn't even get to go from Wiffle and the Minton. I think it was like WR Wiffle Ball. We actually reached out to them for like ask if they had any tips against like the guys they play. Um, when we saw we were playing like the Flamingo, so they were, they were helpful. Um, but yeah, thanks for joining. Um, congratulations once again, just on the championship and hopefully we'll see you next year. Uh, yeah, sounds good. Thank you, man.